Welcome back, DIY Squad. I have a question for you. How's that back wall in your kitchen look? Boring? Plain? A little outdated? Well, stick around because in this episode, I will show you how to add life back into your kitchen with a simple ceramic backsplash install. All right, so today we are gonna be starting our backsplash. The basic items you will need for this project is a thin set or tile adhesive. There are plenty of adhesives out there, so make sure you are reading the packaging to ensure you are using the right one for the job you're doing. For example, if you're installing tile over 15 inches, this one that I'm using right here is not the adhesive to use. You'll have to find one specifically designed to set large tile. Now you will need a notch trowel. There are a variety of them out there, but for this backsplash I recommend a quarter inch notch or smaller. You will need tile spacers. These come in a variety of sizes, so look at the samples in the store or online ultimately to decide which size fits your taste. I'm using 8th inch spacers, which is a common size for backsplashes. And of course, a means of cutting your tile. There are a handful of ways to cut tile, but for this project, I'm using a wet tile saw. Another item you may consider, though not a necessity, is this smaller notched hand trowel, which is really convenient in smaller areas and you will see me using this a lot. Now I am doing two different patterns on my backsplash. Above the cooktop, we are laying a herringbone pattern, and the rest will be done with a running bond pattern. Now an often missed step, but very, very important, is doing a dry layout of your tile. If you have a tile with a lot of different stones, you may notice that some boxes have more of one tone than the other. Here I pull out all the tiles and separate them by white tones and gray tones. If you don't do this and just lay them out box by box, you may end up with a whole section with one tone instead of the tones mixed randomly together. All right, so I'm out of my laser level. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but this line right here is gonna be the edge of that herringbone pattern. So that's where I'm gonna draw my first line. All right, so on this wall, this is where we're gonna start the, the tile process, working my way over to the right. I've got two lines drawn here. That red line is dead center between that vent hood and between the two cabinets that are right there. The advantage of having those two lines is you could do something as simple as this. You line up corner to corner here, and your tile is now at a perfect 45 degree angle. I'm sure there's some really cool math you can do to figure out the distance of those two lines, but I feel this is easier. So you have your tile, measure its width. I got three and three quarters. Half of that would end up being an inch and seven eighths. Here's my center mark. Then we just draw a line, no big deal. Take your tile, set it on the line. Put your red mark on the red line. It doesn't matter where at this point, just put it on the red line. You then take from your speed square and you want to pivot this to the point where the red line matches this line and that red dot is on the line as well. I then take my marker, mark where my corners are, just like that. I then measure. I've got an inch and three eighths. So I know that an inch and three eighths would end up being those two lines. No matter where I end up setting this, Along that line, it will always be at 45 degrees. When laying out your tile, you don't want to set it directly on the counter. Your cabinets may move slightly in changing seasons, your house can settle, or you may have kids that love slamming cabinets. Either way, if they lay directly on the countertop and they are wedged tightly, you can break the tiles or rip them off of the wall if the counter shifts in just the right way. I just use spacers and set the tiles on top of those. Now, I'm not an expert tile guy, so I'm pretty sloppy with laying out my thin set. Doesn't have to be perfect. The whole purpose of those notches on the trowel is to ensure an even coat of thin set on the wall. If you were just slopping it on there and you weren't using a notch trowel, the tiles would be uneven, there would be weird air gaps, and you would just end up pushing out a bunch of thin set between the tiles. Once you lay out a small area of thin set, you'll begin to lay in your tile. Give them some pressure to adhere to the thin set. You will want to collapse the ridges behind the tile but not smash them so hard into the wall that you push all the thin set out. If you do end up with some thin set that rides up the gaps, just take one of your spacers and clean it out, or you can wait till it dries and chip them out with a blade. One tip I picked up is to take a flat block of wood and press it against multiple tiles at the same time. This way, if you have a tile that is slightly raised higher than the others, you can actually press it back flush with the rest. Make sure you're doing your cleanup in between so that thin set doesn't dry before you actually get your tile on there. Just work in small sections. I've got to cut the piece here, going here. I've got to cut the piece that goes here. So really, all of this is going to require a cut. What I like to do is lay out as much of a full piece of tile as I can, 
then go through and mark up a bunch of tiles that need cut and do it all in batches. This way I'm not going out into the cold so many times to cut on my wet saw. Using the wet saw with a fresh blade makes these cuts super easy. The one cut I'm making here is really close to the edge, so I go really slow and hoping I don't break it off. It can make a tile job look really amateur if you do break this piece off and you just stick it on anyway. To get a good clean square edge, I also have a stone cutting blade on my angle grinder to kind of clean it up. Working on a herringbone pattern, I end up back buttering the first few tile to apply them to the wall so I don't cover up the lines I need. Now back buttering is when you just put the thin set on the back of the tile instead of the wall. Once I get the pattern established, I can then just apply thin set on the wall like I was before. Then just like before, work one tile at a time until you have a completed product. We are just barely off. I'm okay with that, considering that we're pretty much at the top. We're gonna to be throwing a border up here. So as far as falling off center, it's not falling off enough that your eye can catch. Now before I could do any grouting, I go through and pull all of my spacers. And then with a utility knife, cut out any thin set that may have squeezed out that I did not already clean up. All right, to get started, there are a couple things you're gonna need. First and foremost, you're gonna need grout. The one that I have is this Polyblend Plus. It's a non-sanded grout. Make sure you're reading the label because non-sanded grout is meant for joints up to an eighth of an inch. If you have anything bigger than an eighth of an inch, you're gonna need sanded grout. Also a word of warning, if you're new to this, make sure you're not getting a grout that's fast setting. Just, just trust me on this, you're gonna be mad if you do. You're gonna need sponges. The next item you're gonna need is a rubber float. They're pretty easy to find pretty much any store that sells tile, you're gonna find these. I start by filling my container and adding water a little at a time. I then mix it to a consistency of thick pancake batter. Remember, you are working against gravity. You're gonna want this to be a little on the thicker side so that it stays on the wall. I then just start slopping it on the wall and using the rubber float to press it into the cracks. Don't worry too much about getting all over the tile, just focus on pressing it into the cracks. Once you get all the grout lines filled, you could then use the float to clean up all the excess. Alright, don't know what happened to the footage of me actually cleaning the grout. I know I took it. I I don't know. Maybe I thought I hit record and I didn't. It just it happens. But cleaning your grout is actually probably the easiest part when it comes to grouting this whole thing. For whatever grout that you purchase, make sure that you read the instructions to see how long that you have to wait before you could actually clean the grout. Basically all you'll need is a bucket of clean water, a sponge. You get the sponge wet and you basically just go through and you just wipe and clean all of it off. Don't press hard or you're gonna end up pressing the sponge into the grout lines and you're gonna push more of the grout out. Just wipe it softly over the top to get all of that extra grout off the wall. Now, once you do this, you're gonna realize you're gonna have to take a few passes over it. So wipe it down, clean the sponge off. Wipe it down lightly again, clean the sponge off. We're gonna start putting our plugs back in. The problem is these are the screws that it came with. Now that we threw an extra half inch of mortar set, some grout, tile, all that fun stuff, you're probably gonna need to go buy some longer screws. And the final step in this backsplash, the caulking. I put blue tape on all the edges to make for a really clean line. You just apply it like you would regular caulking by laying it down, running your finger across it to give it an even consistent look, then pull the blue tape before the caulking dries. Just be careful not to drag the blue tape across your counters or you'll end up with caulking all over the place. And the last thing you are going to do to finish up this project is you're gonna put some sort of sealer on the grout. Now there are many kinds of sealers out there. The one on the left, I guess, gets your grout pregnant. 
The one on the right is actually a seal and enhance. This one will make your grout look wet. As always, if you're watching this and you've learned something from it or you enjoy watching the content, consider liking and subscribing down below. It's completely free to you and it allows me to continue to bring you fresh new content.